Hey there legends, today we're checking out the Rock Stage by Sonicake. They are a new player in the uh, micro effects and amp simulator game. We have a chorus, uh, a self-described rock amp, a delay, a cabinet simulator and a reverb all in this tiny little pedal. And it is so uh, disgustingly affordable that basically there's very, very few things in its price range. This is so much cheaper than any of the uh, sort of competitors. I'm really excited to check it out and I want to show you three different ways to use it. Namely, just basically as a replacement for your rig in a backup situation where you know your amp dies or your modeler dies and you have to go direct to the PA using the cabinet sim, using it into the effects return of an amplifier and using the rock amp as a preamp with the effects and then utilizing only the effects section uh, in the effects loop of your amplifier basically as like a complement to the rest of your rig so if you're running a big pedal board and you want to be able to add a bunch of extra effects for not too much money and more importantly not too much pedal board space so let's go over some of the features and then we'll have a listen to some of the tones Okay, running of the features from right to left, we have got the chorus effect, which has its own speed and depth controls, and then we've got the rock amp. It's a pretty simple setup, just volume, tone, and gain. I'm assuming the tone is a shelving EQ, so as you start on the left, you have more low end and less high end, and as you turn it clockwise, you're going to increase the high end in the mids and decrease the low end. Then we have a delay section with time uh, repeat, which is basically the number of repeats or the feedback, as well as a blend, and then a reverb with a single mix control, as well as a switch for turning the cabinet sim on or off depending on your application. So really, really simple. It feels pretty solid. You know, the foot switches feel really nice to turn on and off, which is really important for somebody like me who loves tactile stuff. I could just press that all day. I won't annoy you guys anymore with it. Uh, and the housing's pretty clean, well labeled, everything's in place, feels pretty solid, and most importantly, it fits in your gig bag. Let's have a listen to this thing. Okay, first up, here's a direct sound. I'm playing my STR LJ1. Okay, so that's probably where I like it. I imagine this is just kind of like a set and forget kind of thing, you know. If you're using this in place of a normal rig, you've got limited options, but in this kind of case, what more do you really want? I mean, it's like a little bit bigger than my hand. Uh, it literally fits in the palm of your hand. So uh, in that kind of case is how it would normally run like a Marshall amp or something like that. One tone, full on distortion with the volume up, and then I can roll the volume down for cleaner sound. <laughs> And as you can hear there, when I do roll the volume down, it does clean up nicely. So I'm going to leave that right there. Let's have a listen to some of the effects. This is the chorus. I'm going to set the depth at halfway to start off, and we'll have a listen to what the speed does. <laughs>
game settings on the knobs actually aren't that extreme. All of this is pretty usable. It doesn't get too wobbly and it doesn't get too deep, which I definitely like. Let's have a listen to what the delay can do uh, with the, let's say the repeats at nine o'clock. I'll set the blend at 50% and I'll set the time at nine o'clock as well. Sounds like this. <laughs> That sounded pretty wild. I mean, that's kind of like a bridge of size thing almost, which I'm very happy with because I love Robin Trower. Even though it's meant to be sort of like an 80s style pedal, um, I find these kind of classic rock tones are where it sounds best. So I like the delay with the time at about one o'clock. Uh, the repeat, well, I'd say 10 o'clock and the blend at halfway. That's kind of my ideal lead delay. And as you can hear, it's sort of like a sweet analog delay sound, which is really, really nice. <laughs> Okay, the final section to check out is the reverb. This is what it sounds like with the mix at nine o'clock. As you can hear the reverb there, it's kind of like a big, bright hall reverb. Uh, I don't mind that at all. I'm not the biggest fan of reverb on guitars anyway, but at least it's a bright reverb and it's kind of staying out of the way of the low end. You can hear that when I'm riffing away on the low strings, it's not muddying it up too much. <laughs> So those are the direct sounds of the Sonicate Rock Stage. Okay, another application of the Rock Stage is basically if you are using this as a backup and your main rig goes down and for example, you're doing a gig where there's already backline, for example, uh, the most common backline amps I see around are either the Marshall JCM 900 or the Marshall DSL. I've got a DSL right here. Uh, I love the way the DSL sound. I can always kind of get by doing a gig with a DSL, but the 900s I find are often a bit hit and miss and you know, backstage amps just kind of get thrashed. So uh, basically in that situation, you just want your sound louder. So what you can do is plug this straight to the effects return of your backline amp. Uh, or even if you've got something like, you know, an EHX 44 Magnum or a Seymour Duncan power stage, you know, a standalone little pedal board amp. Uh, you can plug it straight into that and run it through a speaker. At the moment, I'm not running it through a speaker. I'm running the head into the Fractal X load and then into an IR that I made because it's late at night and I don't want to uh, piss off all the neighbors and crank an amp. However, the X load and the IR is a very, very accurate representation of my normal recording setup. So uh, just use your imagination. Imagine I've got like 20 marshals behind me. Uh, this is what the rock amp sounds like straight into the back with the gain nice and low and the tone at about one o'clock and then I'm going to turn the gain up.
the obvious advantage to just having like a standalone little preamp pedal or a distortion pedal is obviously you can add the effects there. So that sounds pretty decent to me. If you had a backline amp that you weren't really super happy with, this is a great way to sort of get around that sort of situation. Um, or even if you jam it at home because I can use the volume control on this to turn it right down which is pretty nice. So we'll move on now to my favorite application with this pedal, which is also using this Marshall amp. Let's check that out. Okay, this is actually my favorite way to use this multi effect and it's to bypass the rock amp completely and use it in the effects loop of your amp. So it's gonna replace a chorus, a delay and a reverb. Let's just have a listen to the dry sound of the amp and then I'll fire up some of the effects. I'm using a Marshall DSL 100. This is the dry sound. <laughs> Let's bring in the reverb. So I like it about one o'clock for clean tones and probably about 11 o'clock for dirty tones. What I'm gonna do now is add the delay and I've got the blend at halfway, the repeats at nine o'clock and the time at about one o'clock and this is a really great sounding lead style delay to me. This basically sounds exactly like an old school analog delay which I'm really, really glad they did uh, because a lot of the time with these kind of multi effects units, it's like the delays and afterthought, you just get a really kind of bland sounding digital delay. But I love the way this analog delay sounds. Have a listen to this. Yeah. sounds really sweet. That's basically the way I like analog delay. It may not be your cup of tea, but uh, that's pretty much how I would set a delay. So that for me does the job. And then uh, a trick I learned with chorus pedals is that if you set the depth to 100% and the rate all the way off, you kind of get this thickening effect. So I'll turn the delay and the reverb off. Let's just have a listen to what happens when I add the chorus with those settings. <laughs> So you could either use it as individual pedals in that setting or if you're running a big pedal board with a bunch of true bypass loops, what you could do is use this little pedal, set up the reverb, delay and chorus in its own loop and when you want to play a solo, just press that one button and activate all of these effects at the same time and that's kind of like, you know, your lead boost. Uh, one thing you can also play around with is, you know, you've got to be really, really careful with the levels but if you turn the gain all the way off, uh, you can use the like rock amp section basically as an EQ boost as well. So uh, 
it's sort of an unconventional way to use this as a solar boost for your effects loop, but it's pretty effective. Let me just show you what that does with a rock amp. So uh, let me turn these other effects off. You can hear with a bypass. <laughs> That's kind of cool if you set the tone where I've got it, which is uh, probably about 3 o'clock, it'll give you a bit of a mid-boost as well. So, that would be the way I would actually probably use this if I wanted to integrate it with my main rig and not just use it as a backup. Have the reverb, delay, and rock amp section ready to go, and then I've got a sweet lead boost uh, that I can basically put in a true bypass loop. And, uh, you know, try finding a pedal that can do that for this price. <laughs> Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tones, I hope you enjoyed looking over the features, and most importantly, I hope you enjoyed this demo. What I basically figured out was the more time that I spent with this pedal and the more I dialed it in with different rigs, sort of the more that I warmed up to and the more that I liked it. I think that direct it is fine, it's not going to change your life or anything like that, uh, but it is very, very convenient. You know, all of these things, you have to keep in mind that this thing's like a little bit bigger than my hands, it can easily fit anywhere as a backup, like I'm basically just going to keep this in my guitar bag from now on just in case. Comes with a power supply and you can get them for like, you know, 60, 70 US dollars online, which is just, like I said before, it's obscenely cheap, you know. Uh, even if you don't like the way it sounds, it's just something you should own just in case your main rig dies or something like that, purely as a backup. But I think it is a little bit more capable than just a backup solution. As an effects only processor, I really think it shines. And then as a preamp with effects, uh, again, uses a backup rig, I think it really shines in that kind of setting. So there's this whole market around these sort of uh, fly rig style things. And uh, I own the Tech 21 RK5 preamp. Uh, the Richie Cotson fly rig, and I owned it for about a month, and then I sold it because I wasn't exactly, you know, it was fine, you know, it was basically no better than this unit, uh, but it cost like nearly four times the price, so I ended up bumping it off and uh, buying one of the Moore micro preamps, so between the micro preamp and this, I can have two backup rigs <laughs> for my AX8, uh, and basically, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, you know, this would easily get me through a gig, and I actually really, really like the delay in it. I love that analog delay sound. However, they've kind of dialed that in. That's something I'm actually going to use. Uh, so I'm going to keep this pedal both as a backup, but when I just need a cool slapback echo, I like that. I think it's got a character all its own. The chorus is really cool. Uh, the reverb, if you're into whole reverb, sounds really good. And, you know, like I said, for like a $60 pedal, uh, the rock amp sounds really, really good. It will, uh, it does what it says on the tin, basically. So if you're into, I know it says that it's sort of like an 80s rock theme pedal, but uh, I think you can do anything from like 60s style stuff, you know, your Trower and Hendrix, uh, to some of the 80s sort of tones, and also you, know, you can kind of get grungy heavy tones out of it with the right guitar. So that is the Sonic Cake Sonic Bar Rock Stage. Check it out, look online. Uh, thank you to Sonic Cake for sending me one of these, full disclaimer. I got an email from them saying, hey, do you want to check this pedal out? We will send you one for free. They didn't pay me any money. They didn't even ask me to do a demo video, but I liked it enough to do a demo video. So thank you, Sonic 8, uh, to you guys out there who are watching it. Check it out. Like I've said so many times, it's so cheap. You know, it's, it's, it's worth checking out just to have as a backup rig, regardless of what you think of the tones. I happen to like some of the tones genuinely. And if you like this video, smash that subscribe button and check out all my other demos. I will see you guys around soon.